see if you can see it bubbling. Hi, I'm Margie and welcome back to my kitchen. It's been a little while since I've done a video, so I'm very excited to be back. It took me a little while to set things up. But anyway, I'm very excited because today I'm making blueberry jam. And these are organic blueberries. So I want to show you technique today on how to make jam or jelly, okay? Because you may not like blueberry, but really the technique is what's so important when you, when you do this. So we're gonna start by, when you buy your sure gel, I, I use sure gel, okay? When I make jams and jellies, and when you pull out the little package of the sure gel from the box, these directions come with it. And they really have ever, just about anything you'll need to know to make jelly and jam. Okay, now the very first thing you wanna do is to read your directions. You wanna read, sit down, read through your directions, and know what you're doing, know the steps, because it's very important that you follow the directions correctly if you want your jelly really to turn out. Even when they give you the directions, they say, if you do not do that, it will fail. I actually read it a couple of times. It wasn't like, maybe it will fail. <laughs> so anyway, when you take this off of the package, because it's all folded very little, be careful because it's sort of stuck, and it's kind of on both ones that I opened. It was stuck in the same place where it says directions for the jam, which is what I'm trying to make. This one, my first one, actually, I didn't really realize how important it was not to let it tear. So just be careful. Okay, so the utensils that you're going to need to make jam are, I have a very large pot here. And this is actually a pot that's designed just for processing jelly jars. And in it is a rack. And the, in the rack, it, it will fit the jars perfectly so they'll stand up. And there's even a little hook here so when you're all done, ah, I'll show you. If I put this in here, it'll go all the way down, and I'll put my jars in there, and they'll stand up. You can take your, these are very handy, because you can pick up your jars and take them out and place them on your rack without actually touching the jars. So you always want to use brand new lids, okay? This is a brand new lid. The seal on the lid is, um, Never been squished against a jar. You always want to use something brand new. Now the rings, these are rings, those can go on top of that lid. And these don't have to be new ones. These must be new, but the, the rings do not have to be. So they do sell boxes of these lids separately from the rings. But if you buy a box of jars, each jar will have its own lid and ring. Okay, so I also have, this is a little funnel that you could put into your jar when you're using your ladle to pour it in. It helps to keep the edges of the jar from getting um, sticky and getting jelly on them because you have to wipe that off before you put your lids on because you want a nice clean seal. So I hope I didn't forget anything, but if I did, I'll mention it later. Okay, so even though I've made jelly many times and jams, I still always refer to my directions. So here, and make sure, because just a second ago, I was actually reading the one for freezer jellies. You don't want to do that. Always look at what you're reading, make sure it's the right one. And there's my blueberries. Fruit to buy, it says six cups of blueberries is going to make four cups of chopped blueberries. Now I can chop them or I can mash them. So I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. I have this really cool piece of equipment. I'm going to try to chop them. Okay, so I'm just going to measure into my, into my in here we'll do four cups. This is a four cup container. Clearly I bought too many. And you don't want to double recipes. I would not advise doubling a recipe. I'm tempted. Oh, I lost one. Pour them into my colander. 
and I'm going to do another two cups. So I'll have a few left for my cereal. And you're going to be cleaning them so you get little blueberries with little stems on them. So you want to take those off. But I'm going to do that as I'm, I'm going to wash them. Can you see? Okay. And actually, I had this on my sink so I can rinse them off with water that has been purified <laughs> for my organic blueberries. So I'm just going to go through these and look at them and make sure, although these are like perfect blueberries, I just can hardly believe how absolutely gorgeous they are. You have to see how beautiful these are. Okay, so there's a bunch of ones. I'll just be back in a second. I'm just going to clean them. What I'm doing here is I'm going to boil some water because although my jars, I ran them through the dishwasher. They were, these are actually jars that have never been used before, so they came with their own lid and ring. I put them through the dishwasher, but I'm going to boil some water and just fill these jars up and just let the hot water sit in them so when I pour the jam in, it will be a warm jar. Not so much to clean it because it's already been sterilized in my dishwasher and for jam, that's just fine. So I ate some of these blueberries and I don't know whether it's my imagination, but they are really good. You don't think that's because they're organic. So this is my little chopper. It's awesome. Wait till you see how, how well it works. I thought I would try chopping them and um, instead of mashing them. Now I'm filling up this large pot and you want to fill it up so the water is going to be one to two inches. This is a jar I haven't washed. You just want the water to be one to two inches above the jar. So I'm starting with my six cups of blueberries, organic. <laughs> and um, I have a four cup container that I'm going to chop my blueberries in here and just until I have four cups. So six cups of berries really did make my four cups of chopped. So I'm going to fill my jars with some hot water. Then we're going to get started making our preserves. Just put my fruit into my pan and I'm going to add the sure gel to that. And then we're going to bring this to a, a full rolling boil. It may seem like it's a little bit dry, but don't worry because when you add the four cups of sugar, the sugar is going to make it much more liquidy. You'll start to see bubbles, like it's coming to a boil, but a full rolling boil is when you can't stir it down. It just continues to boil even when you're stirring, touch, you know, scraping the bottom. Can you see the little bubbles on the side? And you see how much more liquidy it is? Now when I add the sugar, that's going to create a syrup, which will make it even more thin. So now this is boiling all through it. And when I stir it, it continues to boil. Now I'm going to add the sugar. This is four cups of sugar. Now I'm waiting for the blueberries to boil for a whole minute. And then they'll be done. Now I have a damp paper towel here because when I fill my jars just in case any just fill them to about a half inch below the top I just have a little left that'll just go in my that'll just go in my fridge the recipe actually said it would make six cups. 
pretty much exactly what it made with this little bit left over. I'm going to wipe off the, the rim so when I put my seal on, it will be nice and clean. Just lay it on top, give it a twist down. You don't, it doesn't have to be too tight. So now I'm going to pick one up with my cool tongs. So you just place it, get it where you want it to be. And then squeeze together, it's got these little rubber things. Then you're going to pick it up, bring it in and put it into one of your spaces and let go. And just continue around. Now you want to cover it with a lid. And I apologize, but I can't find my lid. So I'm going to use a large pan, make sure the whole thing's covered. We process the jams for 10 minutes, but we have to wait for it to come to a boil. On the very bottom of the chart of your directions is if you're living high up, an altitude of over a thousand feet, you're going to have to add time to it. So you'll see that. If you're living in my favorite place, Colorado, you should probably plus 15 minutes, it says. It says increase processing time as indicated, and for six to 8,000 feet, it says plus 15 minutes. So I did bring this to a boil, and I turned it down to a simmer. Oh, I guess that's not too simmery. <laughs> I tried to turn it down. So you want to, at this point, you want to take them out. So you take them out. This is where this comes in so handy to squeeze it really tight. Okay, bring it over gently and put it on your rack. And if you listen real carefully, you'll hear the little lids pop. You don't want to touch them or try to see if they are sealing. I guess it would be crazy to sit here and wait because there, there went one. So I'm just going to touch this water. There went another one. Of course, I'll go crazy if the third one doesn't pop, thinking it didn't seal. Because that was actually the last one that I took out, which was the second one to pop. There it went. Okay, that's all done. You let them cool till tomorrow. Don't touch them. <laughs>